Well, a pleasant good morning once again. I'm in Genesis uh, chapter 3 this morning. And uh, for those that are listening on live here, my prayer is that uh, the Word of God be a blessing to somebody today. Uh, this thing is not about me, or, but it's about the Lord and on about you today, that, that the Word of God reach somebody, that somebody uh, life be blessed today and be encouraged. This morning I want to pray before I start. I'll be in Genesis chapter 3. Father God, as we come before you, Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, O God, for your goodness, Lord, this morning. We pray, Lord, that you will bless your word. And those that are watching or listening, O God, today on live, I pray, O God, that your word will be a blessing to them in some way. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, G Genesis chapter 3. And the word of God said, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. My question this morning, number one, why having a conversation with the devil, why having a conversation with the enemy of God? Why allowing the enemy of God so close in your life that there begin to be a fellowship? That's why the Bible say that light and darkness cannot agree. The Bible say, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Amen. For what fellowship hath light with darkness? My first thing here, um, why having fellowship, friendship, why rubbing shoulders with those that are against God? Um, <clears throat> here in the Bible, the devil was definitely and is today is against God. The devil intention never is for someone out there to glorify God. The devil commit, the Bible says, for the thief, the devil is a thief. He cometh not for to he cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus has come to give life and to give it more abundantly. Amen. We're going to continue. Verse uh, 5. And God, the devil is telling uh, Eve now, the daughter of God, godly woman. For God that know that in the day you eat thereof, that your eyes shall be open and ye shall be God's knowing good and evil. Well, the devil lied to Eve to deceive her. Amen. And today he is still the same. For six, and when the woman saw that a tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and you know and he eat also amen verse 7 and the eyes of them both were open and they know that they were naked and they so fig leaves together and made 
themselves aprons, fig leaves. They sew fig leaves and made apron. What a cheap clothing. Anything that the devil do is cheap. Amen. Verse 8 say, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the midst of the cool of the day. Amen. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. <clears throat> Sin will always cause people to distance themselves from fellowshipping with God. And we see here that Adam, he, he and Eve, they sinned against God, and now they hid themselves. They were afraid, and they hid themselves from God. Amen? So sin will always make people distance themselves from God. Yes. Verses uh, 11 here say, <clears throat> And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I command thee, that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou givest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Next thing we see here that... Um, good morning, Brother Amir. Good morning. God bless you, bro. The next thing we see here is not only that sin cause mankind to distance themselves and hide from God. But also we see a blame game is going on here. Adam knew better. He knew that he should not eat the fruit because God gave them a command not to eat the fruit, a certain fruit in the garden. And they disobey God. And disobediousness, because of that, it brings the death sentence upon the human race. Amen. Because of their disobedience. And um, they start to blame each other. Adam blamed his wife. His wife blamed the serpent. And so forth. So sin will always, when people sin, they'll try to cover it up and cast it on someone else. I see a lot of crime scene movies and so on. Somebody always try to cover it up and put a blame on somebody else. But sin... Whatever it might be, it will not be hidden for too long. It will be revealed. <clears throat> Verse 40 said, The Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And we see this is a promise that came through um, 
This is a promise that came true. Serpents, we know that um, today they crawl on their belly and they lick dust, amen. The devil used the serpent as a vessel to deceive Eve. Yes. Verse 15 says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. You see, uh, this is a prophetic word here that the woman, the seed of the woman, it's speaking about Jesus Christ who came on the cross 2,000 years ago. And he has bruised the serpent head by going on the cross and shed his blood. Amen. Uh, yes, by going on the cross and shed his blood. He has bruised the serpent uh, head. Amen. And when Jesus died on the cross, and that was a small thing, but it was something that needed. Because the Bible said without a shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Amen. But also in verse 6, he said, Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and I see it, thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So both pain came because of Eve's sin, disobedience against God. And eat the fruit that God said, don't eat from that tree. Amen. Verse 7, and Adam, and unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree, of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Turns also on thistle shall it bring forth in thee to thee. And thou shalt eat this, the herb of the field. And in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, and for thus thou art, and unto thus shall thou return. So here we see that that sentence was placed upon the human race because of Adam's sin. We see uh, the serpent was cursed, and from that moment it started to move upon its belly, amen, and eat dust, lick dust, and, and that is true. And then we see the woman uh, that uh, bought pain came because of uh, the woman disobedience and listened to the serpent. And then we see also that hardship of laboring and sweating and working hard, uh, came about because of Adam listening to his wife, listening to her. Nowhere here it say that the, the serpent beguiled the man. It say that the the man listened to his wife. He could have uh it's important who you listen to. I'm not saying it's wrong today to listen to your wife, amen. Uh Sometimes our wives are the best uh, people to listen to, but God also, good morning, Brother John, God bless you uh, for watching. So sometimes it's good to listen to your wife, but uh, generally in people out there, it's important who we listen to. Amen. We should be listening to the Holy Spirit we should be listening to the word of God. We should be listening to God even more. Amen. Yes. And because of Adam, he listened to his wife. 
The Bible says that he will return to the dust, amen, from whence he was taken. Verse 20, the Bible says, Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. So Eve, she was the mother, amen, of all living. She was the first mom, amen. And the Bible says in verse 21, And unto Adam also unto his wife, that the Lord made coat of skin and clothed them. So what an exchange. This morning we see that after Adam and Eve sinned against God, and they realized that they were naked because of conscience. They, they get conscience, amen. Morning, Sister Shanaz. Morning, Kevin. God bless y'all. So conscience, her conscience opened when she sinned against uh, the Lord. And, and they made themselves clothing of uh, apron. They made apron out of fig leaves. But here we see in verse uh, 21, God did not cast them away. They, because of their choice of disobeying God and eating that fruit, uh, they gained conscience and, and so on, and they sinned against God. God was displeased, but God did not cast them away. If there is something good I see here in verse 21, it said, Unto Adam and also to his wife did the Lord God made coat of skins and clothed them. May I say this morning that God still know the best for us. No, and so, sometimes we might be out there trying to achieve certain goals in life. But God can help you to achieve your goals. And he know the best goal. Amen. So the Bible says unto Adam and also unto his wife that the Lord God made coat of skins and clothed them. Thank God that God did not allow them there in the cold. Amen. God did not allow them to wear those clothing that will last just for a few uh, days. Amen. But God clothed them with clothes that will last them a long time. And that clothing, uh, he, he, God slay an animal and, 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 and made coat out of the animal skins and clothe them. Amen. Yes. God is able to take care of his own. Amen. Verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, a man has become as one of us to know good and evil, and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, mean angels, and a flaming sword would turn every way to keep the way of the tree of life. The tree of life is still being guarded today. Amen. Yes, and one day we as children of God will live forever in eternity. We'll have a new body and so on. But let me say this morning there's a lot of stuff here in Genesis chapter 3. And um, God still take care of his children Amen. God still take care of his children. Today, I want to close with this uh, short broadcast. I want to pray for those that are watching. Father God, we come before you, Lord. Today, we ask that, God, for those that are watching today, that you will bless them, O Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your testimony. You never give, us, give up on your children. Even though Adam and Eve, they made garment, O Lord, of of fig leaves. You slay an animal, God, and you made coat of uh, those animal skin so you can clothe them, O oh Lord. 
And Father, today you never leave your children alone. You always take care of us, O oh God, and satisfy our need. We pray, O oh God, that you will bless those that are watching and help them today to draw close to Jesus. Let me say this morning, may you draw closer to God today. Amen. Draw closer to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Draw close to him. The Bible said, draw close to the Lord and he will draw close to you. Amen. God bless you.